time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and it's time for me to share an incredibly ambitious 3D printing project that I've been working on in collaboration with MyMiniFactory.com. Now you guys know that Star Wars Episode 7 is coming out later this year and everybody is pumped about it, myself included. So MyMiniFactory.com reached out to me and we decided it would be cool to 3D model an entire Episode 7 Stormtrooper suit that will fit my rather large sexy body. So starting with this first video, I'm gonna show you guys what goes into actually digitizing my body into the computer and what kind of work MyMiniFactory.com does and what software they use to produce the 3D models that ultimately I'm gonna 3D print here in the Nerd Cave and build a suit that I'm gonna be wearing to PAX Prime in Seattle, Washington. So guys, sit tight and come to the dark side. <laughs> All right guys, well this is officially episode one in a long series of episodes that are to come because this is a very huge and ambitious project. It is the most ambitious 3D printing project I've ever taken on. So if you guys are interested in seeing the regular progress updates, make sure that you click the subscribe button down below so you get notified when new videos come out. And if you wanna see all the behind the scenes stuff, make sure you check the video description because there's gonna be links to live streaming of the printing, live streaming of the 3D modeling, and you can also come over to my Twitter, I'm at Barnacles, and you can go to my Instagram, which I'm also Barnacles there, and you can see all of this stuff unfold in real time. It's actually gonna be really exciting. Now the way this whole project started was when my mini factory reached out to me after seeing a couple of videos that I did that they really liked. One of those videos was this guy right here. This is the Duke Mark 44 hand cannon from the popular game Destiny. Now this model was created by a guy named Kirby Downey who also works at my mini factory and you can see from the design it's in two pieces so that you can print it a half at a time and assemble it to cut down on support material and it has moving parts. You can actually have the drum come out and you can pull out the ammunition and load it and it snaps back into place. It is a very well-designed 3D model designed to be printed on any desktop 3D printer. The other video that they saw is I 3D printed a hand crank fan and it actually had a gearbox in it to step up the ratio and give it a mechanical advantage and that was also created by Kirby Downey and it was a phenomenal model but it really got them interested in my channel and they wanted to do a collaboration. Now after going back and forth with my mini factory we came up with the idea that we want to create a Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens Stormtrooper armor and more specifically we want to create that armor to be form fitting to my body now you guys know i'm about 300 pounds and i'm only about 5'10 so i'm not exactly your average size so for that reason they need to 3d model the suit to be form fitting to my body and that's what we're going to talk about in this episode is what it takes for them to basically take and digitize me into a 3d model into the computer so they can build the armor around me and how I get to the point where I can 3D print that out, put it back together, and it's actually going to fit. Now, the lead designer on this project is Lloyd Roberts, and I'll also have a link in the video description to both his channel and his MyMiniFactory.tv live stream. Every day that he's working, you can actually go watch him work on this armor, and you can stare at a pretty sexy 3D model of me floating around on the screen, which, come on, that's, that's incentive enough, right? So the first step in this process was I had to actually go over to my friend's house and have him walk around me 360 degrees and take a series of about a hundred photographs of me standing in a T pose with my arms out to my side. Now I had to hold perfectly still through this process because what happens next is all of these photos are fed into a program that basically analyzes the overlapping images and the light and shadows to create a point array that then gets turned into the 3D model. Now the the problem is there's a lot of distortion in this 3D model when it's created and as you can see it's actually very ugly. But uh, what they have to do from this point is they have to clean it up. So what they did is they took one of their guys, his name's Francesco, and he actually uses a program called ZBrush and he goes through and meticulously cleans up the model and this means going through and smoothing out all of the roughness, getting the proportions right, and he even had to basically go through and fix my face because my face was super busted up uh, for some reason throughout this process. So he basically went through looking at pictures of my face 
and recreated the 3D model so that it was right and it was proportionate because they need my body measurements to be exact because they're going to be creating an armor that when I print, it's going to be form fitting and they also have to print a helmet that fits my head. So they have to start out with an accurate model. So in addition to me giving them those photographs, I also tell them what my height is because once they create the 3D model, they then have to make it the proper height and everything else should be proportionate. Now, I also provided some additional photos to them with my arms at my side in a different pose so that they could use that as a reference to clean up the model and move it around and make sure everything was accurate. And ultimately, I will be providing them with some measurements around my waist and around my thighs and arms and stuff like that so that they can actually compare it to the model and dial it in that much better. But in a nutshell, they I've never seen these guys in person. I've never been in the office with them. I've just sent them photographs and they managed to basically build a 3D model of my entire body into the computer. Now, once it's cleaned up in ZBrush, then it goes over to Lloyd. And what Lloyd does, he uses a program called Rhinoceros 3D. And he goes through and creates meticulously each one of these armor pieces that come together to form the Stormtrooper suit. Now, this is a painstaking process. He already has t over 20 hours of 3D modeling in on the suit, and he's not done yet. He's still got to work on a lot of the detail work. Uh, the helmet, I don't have any pictures of yet, but I know that he's made some pretty good progress on that. And if you guys want to see him 3D modeling and see what goes into creating something like this, definitely go over to the MyMiniFactory.tv page page and look at his stream and there'll be a link in the video description for that and every day you can watch how he brings this thing to life it's actually pretty damn cool now Lloyd likes to have a little fun every once in a while so one time when I was watching the live stream he thought it'd be cool to make my cod piece uh more anatomically correct and uh as you can see the results here are pretty damn funny. I was half tempted to have him just leave it that way so that when I printed it out, I went to PAX Prime, I just had this giant cod piece, but I figured that might offend some people. So uh, we'll just keep that as a joke in this video. Now we wanna make the suit look as movie accurate as possible with exceptions to a few little surprises that we're gonna unveil down the road to you guys. But in order to do that, we needed a good representative sample of photos. And for that, I turned to my friend Darth Tigger 501 over on Twitter and he provided a ton of photos that he took down in Anaheim, California during the Star Wars celebration. And he basically found some guys that were wearing movie accurate armor that was licensed by Lucas to be created. So you know that it's gonna be accurate. And those photos are used as the basis of creating this 3D model. And the process is basically these guys that are 3D modeling these parts are taking measurements off the photos, they're eyeballing it, they're looking at each detail and they're transferring it over into polygons that fit onto my body. That is really freaking awesome. Now, at this point, we're getting very, very close in the project to actually 3D printing some of the parts, but there's another step that has to take place. And that is you have to realize that the, stand, the average desktop 3D printer, be it a Robo 3D or an Ultimaker, Original or V2, they all have a build volume that's around eight inches by eight inches by eight inches cubed. In some cases, give or take a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller, but desktop 3D printers are not large format printers. Now, for that reason, what they're gonna have to do is break the armor up into pieces using a process called slicing. And what they're going to do is they're going to cut the pieces apart in such a way that I can print each little segment on the 3D printer and then snap them back together when they're done into the original pieces. And guys, there will be a follow-up video hopefully next week showing this process. Now the end goal here is to print all of these pieces, assemble them, and have a full suit of armor including the helmet, all of the body pieces, the blaster, and maybe a couple extra little surprises. And I'm going to be wearing that entire getup to PAX Prime. So if you guys see a dude that looks like he may have eaten a couple too many donuts walking around with what appears to be a 3D printed Stormtrooper armor, you can probably assume it's me. And if you're really, really worried about it, just go around the backside. It'll say Barnacle's Nerdgasm on the back. Now, the material that I'm using for this project actually comes from a company called ColorFab, and it's called XT. And XT is basically a material that's like PLA. It's, it's rigid, but it does have a little more give to it than PLA, but it has a higher melting point. And that is actually really good for a couple of reasons. And that is if I'm out in the sunlight or I'm out in a really hot area, I don't have to risk uh, conventional PLA breaking down and getting soft. So, and it's a lot stronger material than just PLA. And I've actually been using it for a long time. And if you guys are interested in getting your own XT material, you can actually get it from a distributor called printedsolid.com. I'll have a link to them in the video description. And they've been incredibly good to me in the channel and they're a great business. I've never heard any complaints about them. But if you guys have other questions about the ColorFab materials, go ahead and contact me over on Twitter. I'm at Barnacles, or you can actually tweet ColorFab or printed solid directly over there also. Now the goal is to start printing the suit starting 
next week. So if you guys would like to see that process live as it's occurring on the 3D printers, I'll have a channel set up on myminifactory.com TV. And you can actually get the link in the video description along with all of the other links that I've talked about throughout this video. And you guys can watch this process unfold because we want it to be like a story. We want you guys to see from conception all the way through design, all the way through printing, and ultimately me wearing it to PAX Prime. And I think it's gonna be an amazing experience. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this first installment video, just giving you a taste of the project and where we're currently at. And I urge all of you guys to leave your comments down below on the video. Let me know what you think about this project. Let me know if you have any ideas for it. And let me know if you guys are tuning in and watching the live stream over on myminifactory.tv. And I'll be in the chat over there on occasion. And when I am in the chat, I'll let you guys know over on my Twitter and other social networks like Facebook and Instagram so that you guys know to come over there if you want to live chat with me. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap up this video. Until next time. May the force be with you. Oh, wait a second. No, no. Uh, come to the dark side. Yeah, that's it. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.